The media finding new ways to defend and excuse a surge in anti-Semitism. Hamas sympathizing ghouls have been ripping down po posters of innocent Israelis being held hostage. But the New York Times wants you to consider the feelings of the vandals. Quote, removing the posters has quickly emerged as its own form of protest. A release valve and also a provocation by those anguished by what they say was the Israeli government's mistreatment of Palestinians in the years before October 7th and since the bombing of Gaza began. I'm going to throw up. Another outlet actually claims that the posters could be a trap and are baiting people into getting filmed and doxxed. And with garbage like that floating around, it probably won't be long until the left-wing press finds a way to normalize the Cornell student who threatened to kill any Jewish student he saw on campus. The feds arresting 21-year-old Patrick Dye for making online threats. And he was in federal court to face the charges, which could land him in jail for up to five years. The White House getting asked point blank, if stuff like that is domestic terrorism. The people in this country making violent anti-Semitic threats, are they domestic terrorists? I, I don't uh, know that we're classifying people as domestic terrorists for that. I mean, I, that's really a question better left to law enforcement. I'm, I'm not aware that there's been such a, uh, a characterization of that. <sighs> Terrible question. Of course, uh, it, 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 you're not a domestic terrorist if you're not a white guy in a red hat. That's the rule, all right? <laughs> Dana, my theory on why they're defending these people that are tearing down the posters is because the truth of the posters is too hard to bear. And it blows, it blows your filter of oppression versus oppressor filter right out of the water. It shatters your ego if you're on the other side. So I think what they're saying is, is like, it's just too hard to look at, so get rid of it. It's, it's so hateful. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, went, they, they walk by so many other things that mm -hmm. they could tear down, but they don't. They decide to tear down the pictures of children. Mm -hmm. And uh, earlier today or yesterday, I did a, an interview of Martha McCallum on her own podcast because she last week was at the Israeli consulate and she was part of a small group of journalists who was shown the 45 minutes of the Hamas GoPro videos mm -hmm. and the other videos that were put out. Okay, so it's... Uh, her podcast is called The Untold Story. It posted today. It's definitely something that we should all listen to. She watched it, and other journalists have watched it on our behalf. As they're the witness. And she is shaken up by it. Of course she is. And what is shocking is that how quickly you could go from being horrified about what happened on October 7th to tearing down posters, and you think that's okay? And let me tell you about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib get this anti-Semitic label. Mm -hmm. But AOC is giving them a real run for their money. Today, she went after APAC. Meanwhile, she has all of these incidents happening in her very own city, and she doesn't say a word. Remember when there was crimes against women yeah, in the city or Asian Americans? She says nothing. No. But she will defend them. No. She doesn't do, she doesn't do anything for women in her constituency. Right. Um, uh, Jesse, there's another reason I think that they're defending these people is that they got exposed. They're being filmed. So now, now if they could get away with it, it wouldn't make a big deal. But now the media has to defend them because they, they could get in trouble. I want to say something about Arab Americans mm. and about the Muslim world. Mm. Oh, I'm not going to hold your hand, even though I should, Dana. <laughs> we, when I say we, I mean the West and Western technology have created the Middle East. We made them rich. We got that oil out of the ground. Our military protects all of these oil shipments flying around the world, making them rich. We fund their military. We respect their kings. We kill their terrorists. Okay? But we've had it. We've had it with them. Obama, Trump, now Biden have tried to get the heck out of that stupid desert. Just as we're about to get out, because we have this great balance of power we're arranging, these crazy Muslim fanatics come in and massacre over a thousand of our allies and hold Jewish people hostage, hold Americans hostage. And so if you're an Arab American in this country and you rip down posters of Jewish hostages, of American hostages, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Someone is going to get punched in the face. When you rip down posters of hostages like that, this is absolutely not. And the New York Times 
The second sentence, Greg, that I thought was even worse, whose suffering should command public attention right. and sympathy? So what they've done is they've now made suffering a commodity. Mm -hmm. They'll put a price tag on emotional suffering. You know, is it, is it the Jews? Uh, is it black teens? The Native Americans? The Palestinians? You know, who's suffered the most? And he who's suffered the most is allowed, as you say, a free punch. Mm -hmm. And so now they've justified violence to avenge suffering. And so now people are above the law, people are below the law, and that's making everybody crazy because we can't live in a country like that. Mm -hmm. and, and I won't live in a country like that. Do you imagine, I mean, like, I was just thinking about this, that you can burn the American flag and generally people will just dismiss you as a nut. God forbid you burned a Palestinian flag. Oh, God forbid. Yeah, you would be, you, I think you would be arrested. Probably. I don't know, I don't know. Not that I'm advocating that, of course. I'm against burning anything, except my burning love for Harold Ford. <laughs> How are you? Good to be back. How's it it is How good great to be is back. it to be back around it, the table? It's, it's tremendous to be back. I, I've been watching every day, and I'm, I'm glad to be able to contribute, my, put my voice as a part of this. I, I don't necessarily disagree with what Jesse has said, but I, I think both parties... Uh, and every organization and company has its share of fools and haters and bigots. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of that on display now. I think sometimes when we try to have serious conversations, particularly in politics, really anywhere, it gets reduced sometimes to, I'll be simplistic, uh, the progressives or MAGA, when really things are far more complicated political issues, I think, and more nuanced in many ways and deserve more in inspection. Two, I'm always amazed in the last two weeks as I hear people in my party, the Republican Party, as I hear people on college campuses or elsewhere, serious people seemingly, say that they want a ceasefire or some sort of pause, but not before or at any time saying they wish we'd give, wish that uh, the Hamas would give back the hostages. You can't have a pause or, pause or a ceasefire uh, until the hostages are given back. It's hard to even, it's, it, you can't even take people like that seriously, let alone credibly, if they're not willing to talk about those kinds of things. Two, the Israeli-Saudi normalization, which we're on path to getting, we have to remember a huge part of that, is, as all of us know, was a, a two-state solution, uh, something that would give the Palestinians predictability, stability, a chance, and an ability to raise their kids with the kind of security that we all wish for our kids. Uh, and this has derailed that in, in, in the worst of ways. Uh, I'd end on this point, which I don't mean to be political on, but I do think we have to acknowledge that in politics, as Kelly and I both know, and all of us know, and Dana knows perhaps more than any, having worked in the White House along with Kelly, and that you can't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Uh, Senators McConnell, Graham, President Biden, they agree on something that is fundamental to where we sit right now. Let's fund Ukraine, Israel. Let's fund the southern border efforts, and let's fund our efforts in Taiwan. It may not be the perfect bill. It may not, may not be the perfect proposal. But we can't wait three to four weeks to get this done. So I would hope that those who want to solve this, want to be a part of the solution, be a part of the solution uh, and, and stop being a part of uh, hindering things. That's on college campuses and in our Congress. That, that solution, though, of grouping things together is always just infuriating to me. Not You're not infuriating to me. You never will be. But just the idea of having to put these things all together. What do you think, Kellyanne? Well, House Republicans are pushing back on that. It's a big question back in their districts. People don't want all those funds commingled. They don't want to think of this as, as one big thing. But I want to get back to the Chiron we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Liberal media defend people ripping down uh, hostage posters. Uh, people should know that President Biden said, well, I don't really have confidence in Hamas numbers. And the Washington Post fact checker, Glenn Kessler, said, you know, they, Hamas has a pretty good track record at revealing death tolls, defending them yet again. The New York Times calling this a release valve. That if you're ripping down posters of Israeli hostages, which you correctly point out and must be returned, it's a release valve. They're not jogging, boxing, or having a shot of tequila. Right. I mean, <laughs> so even right. these subtle phrases that somehow pass an editor or two's desk, that are somehow reporting facts to the rest of us. And I would like to point out, in 2021, he did it the first time, but in 2023 at Howard University, President Joe Biden <clears throat> said that white supremacy is the most dangerous thing in the United States of America. That's what he said. You can't even get John Kirby to say that this is domestic terrorism, people who are ripping down posters. And I have to say, what's going on right now, the calls for ceasefires, the pro-Hamas sympathies, that's not just young people on college campuses. That's Democrats in the halls of Congress. 18 of them just last Thursday 
signed a resolution calling for the, quote, immediate de-escalation and ceasefire in Israel and, quote, occupied Palestine. So if you've got 18 Democrats, all of whom are Hispanic and African-American, exactly the kinds of folks that Joe Biden is going to rely upon to help him win again. And they're, they are raging. And the New York Times had a whole article that said, young and diverse left rages at Biden. So this is a big problem for the party. I, I appreciate you trying to make it bipartisan. I, I don't it think is. it, well, I don't think anybody should, I, I think there should be no question. Everybody should condemning what AOC said today. APAC is a terrorist organization crazy. calling it's for like violence. It's one of the most Just bipartisan crazy. organizations That's who goes on trips like with them. The and in D.C., yes, course. they take everyone over there. Maybe you've gone. I haven't. But we all, we all need to know that somehow the media, weeks later, Greg, still can't get this yeah. right. They can't figure out. And I think that mainstream media is edging toward immoral clarity on mm -hmm. all of this. Yeah, and when you, you're seeing Jews now in New York protecting the posters. How soon will New York Times call them instigators? <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.